In a chilling twist of fate, the jubilant atmosphere of the community celebration came to a harrowing halt as the deafening echoes of gunshots pierced through the air, casting a shadow of dread across downtown. What initially seemed like a festive occasion, with cheers and laughter filling the streets, morphed into a scene of sheer terror. The abrupt eruption of panic unfolded before our eyes as the celebratory mood twisted into a nightmarish reality. Videos captured the pandemonium that ensued. Parents frantically scooping up their children, brave citizens tackling suspects attempting to flee, and the swift actions of countless first responders strategically placed at the parade. However, the aftermath revealed a grim toll. 20 to 40 individuals, including 11 innocent children, left wounded and rushed to hospitals. Miraculously, emergency teams managed to save all but one. Lisa Lopez Galvan, a Tejano DJ for local radio station KKFI, tragically met her end at the scene, leaving behind a shattered community and mourning family. The ominous question looms, was this orchestrated chaos the result of a calculated terrorist act? As federal and local authorities, including the FBI, ATF and state police, plunge into a relentless investigation, the chilling details of this tragedy are unraveled. Join us as we rewind to the inception, dissect the known facts and confront the haunting question. What do you believe truly transpired in the heart of this nightmare? In the wake of a historic victory on February 11th in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Kansas City Chiefs clinched their second consecutive Super Bowl win against the San Francisco 49ers. This extraordinary achievement, a rarity in the annals of football history, should have been a moment of unbridled joy for Chiefs fans. However, the grim shadows of tragedy cast a veil over the subsequent celebration in their hometown. With the majority of fervent supporters unable to make the costly journey to Vegas, the Chiefs organized a grand victory rally back in Kansas City. A meticulously planned event, boasting an allocation of nearly $1 million from the municipal budget, aimed to ensure an unforgettable and secure celebration. The city united in excitement as schools cancelled classes, allowing families to partake in the festivities together. As the triumphant team embarked on a two-mile parade route, escorted by over 800 police officers, an estimated one million fans swarmed the streets, basking in the sunny atmosphere on Valentine's Day. Little did they anticipate the heart-wrenching turn of events that would shatter the jubilant spirit. Join us as we revisit that fateful Wednesday in February, explore the shocking details of the unfolding tragedy, and seek to understand the profound impact it had on the Chief's moment of glory. The foreboding turn of events unfolded just before 2 p.m. Central Time, casting a dark shadow over the culmination of the parade. The celebratory atmosphere, marked by confetti falling from the sky, abruptly descended into chaos as the sound of gunshots pierced the air. Witnesses, startled by the sudden violence, recounted the moments leading up to the tragedy. Reports surfaced of a preceding altercation where one witness claimed to have overheard a woman urgently cautioning someone with the words, not now, this isn't the place. The echoes of these ominous words were drowned out by the subsequent gunfire. Amidst the pandemonium, the heroic response of attendees became evident as one of the suspected shooters was pursued and tackled by courageous onlookers. As panic gripped the scene, some Chiefs players, including Trey Smith and James Winchester, sought refuge alongside attendees in a confined space, bravely maintaining composure until evacuation became possible. An eyewitness sheltering inside Union Station recounted a security guard's urgent directive to hop a fence, alluding to the imminent danger posed by the shooter. In this harrowing moment, head coach Andy Reid and players emerged as pillars of strength calming terrified children amid the turmoil. The aftermath of the shooting saw Chiefs players and their families, who had joyously attended the parade, swiftly escorted from the area and transported back to the safety of Arrowhead Stadium. Join us as we delve into the chilling details of this unexpected and tragic turn of events, shedding light on the bravery and resilience displayed in the face of unimaginable adversity.
In the aftermath of the devastating shooting, the stark toll reveals a heart-wrenching reality. 23 individuals fell victim to the indiscriminate violence, resulting in one tragic homicide and 22 injuries. The sole fatality was Lisa Lopez Galvan, a vibrant host of the Taste of Tejano show on local radio station KKFI, whose life was tragically extinguished at the scene. Children's Mercy Hospital bore witness to the harrowing plight of 11 young victims, aged between 6 and 15 years old. Miraculously, despite the grave nature of their injuries, all children are expected to make a full recovery. The Kansas City Fire Department's medical director, also an emergency medicine physician, played a crucial role at the scene. Her swift and efficient triage efforts ensured that the most critically injured individuals were rapidly transported to hospitals. A testament to the urgency of her actions, the very first arrival faced life-threatening injuries but was promptly ushered into the operating room, a critical intervention that likely spared his life. Victims were transported to three different hospitals, Children's Mercy Hospital, Truman Medical Center, and St. Luke's. Officials from Children's Mercy Hospital shared a glimmer of hope amidst the tragedy, confirming that all children wounded in the shooting have been discharged. As we delve into the grim details of this ordeal, we aim to understand the resilience displayed by the medical professionals and the community in the face of this incomprehensible tragedy. A somber shadow fell over the community as news broke of the tragic death of radio DJ Elizabeth Lopez Galvon, known as Lisa, to her friends, who succumbed to gunshot wounds sustained at the rally, as confirmed by her employer, KKFI 90.1 FM. In an email to CNN, station spokesperson Kelly Doherty expressed profound grief, stating, We are absolutely devastated at the loss of such an amazing person who gave so much to KKFI and the KC community. Manny Abaka, a legislator in Jackson County, Missouri, and a spectator who spent time at the parade with his daughter, shared poignant reflections on Lopez Galvon's impact. A member of a very large family of civic leaders, deeply involved in the city's Latino community, she was remembered as the radiant presence at every gathering. Abarca spoke of her voluntary role as a DJ for community events, emphasizing her vibrant and giving nature, a beacon of positivity for the community. Beto Lopez, Lisa's brother, shared the profound personal toll this tragedy has exacted on their family. In a Facebook post, Lee's summit mayor, Bill Baird, revealed that not only did Lisa lose her life, but Beto's nieces and nephews also suffered injuries in the shooting. In a heartfelt interview with CNN's Anderson Cooper, Beto Lopez paid tribute to his sister, describing her as an enthusiastic Chiefs fan and an extraordinary woman, mother, sister and friend. He lamented the lasting impact of her loss on the community and emphasized her altruistic contributions, urging people to recognize her as more than a statistic. As the community rallies to commemorate Lisa's legacy, the pain of her absence reverberates, prompting initiatives to raise funds for charitable causes and organizations. In the face of this tragic reality, her brother strives to humanize her memory, emphasizing the warmth, care and devotion that defined Lisa Lopez Galvan's existence. As we delve into the grim aftermath of the shooting, the landscape unfolds, shedding light on the individuals now facing charges in connection with this tragic event. At the time of this video, the disturbing details reveal that two adults and two juveniles have been implicated in the incident. Initially, the apprehension of three juvenile suspects marked the outset of the investigation with two found armed. However, further scrutiny led to the release of one juvenile absolved of involvement in the shooting, while the other two remain in custody. On February 16th, these juveniles faced charges encompassing gun-related crimes and resisting arrest, with the anticipation of additional charges looming on the horizon. The veil of secrecy shrouding the details of the juvenile suspects as the case navigates through family court, intensifies the intrigue. The possibility of additional charges and the potential certification of juveniles to be tried as adults adds a layer of complexity to an already convoluted narrative. 
The absence of information regarding a certification hearing further deepens the enigma. As for the adults involved, in a late February announcement, Jackson County Prosecutor Jean Peters Baker revealed charges against Dominic Miller, 18, from Kansas City, Missouri, and Lindell Mays, 23, from nearby Raytown, Missouri. According to court documents, Dominic is implicated as the likely killer of Lisa Lopez Galvon, while Lindell is pointed to as the individual who initiated violence by brandishing a weapon. The severity of their charges is staggering, comprising one count of second-degree murder, two counts of armed criminal action, and one count of unlawful use of a weapon. Amidst the court proceedings, a third adult male faces charges of unlawful possession, having picked up a gun around the time of the shooting. Law enforcement, however, asserts that this individual is not directly implicated in the violent act. As the legal saga unfolds, the central question persists. What drove these individuals to escalate to such violence during a community celebration? In the absence of a clear motive and with the spectre of terrorism dismissed, the search for answers intensifies, unraveling the complex threads that led to the hospitalization of many and the tragic loss of a young mother's life. In the aftermath of the tragic shooting, law enforcement agencies are collaborating to piece together the puzzle, with the Kansas City Police working in tandem with the FBI and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. Their collective effort involves the collection of both physical and digital evidence, along with interviews of witnesses and victims. An FBI online portal has been established for the public to submit digital evidence emphasizing the collaborative approach to unraveling the complexities of this heinous crime. During a news conference, Kansas City Police Chief Stacy Graves provided preliminary insights into the investigation, characterizing the incident as a dispute between several people that ended in gunfire. Importantly, she emphasized that there is no indication of a nexus to terrorism or homegrown violent extremism, offering a glimpse into the motive behind the violence. Details emerging from the investigation shed light on the sequence of events leading to the shooting. Lindell Mays, engaged in a dispute with a group of four men, escalated the confrontation when one of them challenged him. Surveillance footage captured Mays aggressively approaching the group, pointing his finger angrily and then pulling out a handgun. Mays later admitted to police that he drew his weapon first, hesitating to shoot due to the presence of children but ultimately firing at a random member of the group. Mays characterized his actions as stupid, expressing remorse for pulling out a gun and initiating the violence. Lindell Mays, armed with a stolen handgun, was met with gunfire from Dominic Miller. Tragically, a subsequent ballistic comparison revealed that Miller's weapon fired the fatal shot that claimed the life of Lisa Lopez Galvan. Both Miller and Mays sustained injuries during the shooting and were hospitalized. Miller remains hospitalized as of the latest update. Both defendants face charges and are held on a $1 million bond. Prosecutor Jean Peters Baker affirmed the commitment to hold every shooter accountable with the investigation ongoing, to apprehend any additional individuals responsible for the violence. Kansas City Police Chief Stacy Graves expressed confidence in the prosecutor's office, emphasizing their relentless pursuit of justice. The investigation continues at full throttle, with dedicated teams of detectives working tirelessly to ensure that all those responsible for the shootings face the maximum punishment allowed by law. As the city grapples with the aftermath, the pursuit of justice remains an unwavering priority for law enforcement and the community at large. In the wake of the devastating shooting, Missouri Governor Mike Parson swiftly responded, attending the scene and announcing on social media that state law enforcement personnel are actively supporting local authorities in their response efforts. The tragedy garnered national attention, with President Joe Biden being briefed on the incident and Mayor Quinton Lucas receiving calls from the White House offering assistance in the ongoing investigation. Amidst the somber aftermath, the House of Representatives, led by Congressional members Emmanuel Cleaver, Sharice Davids, Mark Alford, and Anne Wagner, held a poignant moment of silence. 
The broader community, including local sports teams such as the Chiefs, the Kansas City Royals, and the Kansas City Current, along with the NFL, expressed condolences for the victims and their families. In a commendable show of solidarity, the Chiefs launched the KC Strong Fund in partnership with the United Way of Greater Kansas City. This initiative aims to support victims of the shooting, their families, and first responders, while also contributing to violence prevention and mental health support services. The Chiefs, the Hunt Family Foundation, and the NFL collectively donated $200,000 to the fund, with individual contributions from Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes of $50,000, and Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey and singer-songwriter Taylor Swift, each donating $100,000 to GoFundMe pages. The Parkland High School shooting, which occurred coincidentally exactly six years prior on February 14, 2018, resonated with parents of its victims, who expressed dismay and a lack of surprise given the lax gun laws. This tragedy underscores the persistent challenge of gun violence in Kansas City, a city that has been targeted by the US Justice Department in an effort to address violent crime. Mayor Quinton Lucas, along with mayors across the country, has called for new laws to reduce gun violence, advocating for measures such as universal background checks. The FBI, seeking public assistance, encourages parade-goers to submit any video footage that may aid the ongoing investigation. As the community grapples with the aftermath, the collective response demonstrates a commitment to addressing the broader issues surrounding gun violence and supporting those affected by this senseless tragedy. The two adult suspects attended a celebration parade armed. After a seemingly very minimal verbal altercation, they immediately escalated to shooting one another. It doesn't make sense that there weren't several steps in between getting into a verbal altercation, which was reported to not last very long, and the starting of the shooting. Were there previous issues between these two men? What could have led them to start shooting into a parade crowd full of their neighbors, full of children? The prosecutor's office is sending signals that they expect more arrests in connection with the shooting. There must be more to this story and we'll keep our eye on it. What do you think? For today, with great respect and sadness, Lisa's family will have the last word. In a statement responding to the charges brought against the two suspects, they have stated the following. On behalf of the Lopez Galvan family, we are grateful to the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office, led by Jean Peters Baker, and her amazing team of highly experienced and dedicated prosecutors. We also want to thank law enforcement departments involved in this investigation. The effort and dedicated hours spent to expeditiously investigate this senseless act of violence is extremely commendable. It is reassuring for our family and the entire community to know that this joint team effort has resulted in the identification of the suspects involved. Though it does not bring back our beloved Lisa, it is comforting to know that the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office and the KCPD made it a top priority to seek justice for Lisa the other shooting victims, those who had to witness this tragedy unfold, and the Kansas City community. If you found this story intriguing, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more captivating true crime content. Stay curious, stay connected, stay with Really Unreal.